Thank you very much, my brethren, and it's really nice to be here. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so kindly. I appreciate that. It makes me feel good when you feel welcome. There's nothing more sweeter than to, to come into a place where you feel welcome and just at home. And I was thinking just when I was standing there and of the kindness of, of the people, the kindness of God and the people. Just a few moments ago, I heard that message go forth and the Holy Spirit speak back that to listen to the message. And then, uh, then hear these brethren get up and say those things, it just makes me feel good. Then today I happened to pick up some of the advertisement, as Brother Joseph told you last night, I just kind of run in this time. I was scheduled for overseas at this very time, but was turned down on the account of some uh, uh, investigation from tax that I'm going through at this time at my church. And the foundation of the church, how we have to have a governmental numbers and so forth, that we didn't know because... The tabernacle is an interdenominational tabernacle. We didn't know you had to go through all this rigmarole. We thought that you were just a church and had deacons and pastors and so forth. But the government changes. They changed in 49, I think it was. Well, I was out on the field preaching then. I didn't know their changes and <laughs> what the Congress did. As I said last night, we're talking about Spudniks and moons. But we can't even take care of what we got down here, let alone go somewhere else. <laughs> Or I can anyhow. From the looks of things, we're not doing too good a job as a, as a nation or a people. But then another great thing come, as I noticed that on the advertisement, I said to Joseph just a few moments ago, Brother Joseph, I made a terrible mistake last evening. I don't like to have a meeting without having a healing service at least one time during the convention, and I, we placed it for Friday night. And then I picked up the advertisement, and Brother Grant, my gracious and precious brother and friend, was to have a service that night for the seeking of the Holy Spirit. And my, I, I wouldn't want to take it from that. And Joseph said that Brother Grant had suggested that and moved right in sweetly to give it away for a night to pray for the sick. I don't know where the Brother Grant's even here. I haven't seen him yet, but the Lord God bless our brother for his gallant um, soul and the way he so graciously given that time. I told him we could change it and have it on a Thursday night, just the same as Friday, and let go right ahead because I think it's more essential that the soul gets saved than all the healing that would be done. That's right. The soul is, is the main thing because you can be healed of your sicknesses. That's true. And your affliction's cured. I know that. But when that soul is healed, it's eternal. But when this healing of the body, you may get sick again. But the soul is the main thing. Or did you ever try to put a valuation on what eternal life is? What's, what could you give for? If I could be turned back to a boy of 19, 20 years old and would have all the world and live 500 years without sickness or old age, I, or either live another one or ten more years and have all kinds of troubles and beg for my food and be persecuted and martyred at the end, but have eternal life, I'd take that. When 500 years is up, it'll be all be over, but it'll never end with eternal life. I'll live in the presence of Christ forever. We just don't know what's wrapped in that treasure that God has given us. Brother Rasmus, it's sure nice to see you again tonight. We much fellowship if we had together and different ministers, and I think we're to have a breakfast pretty soon, and and we we'll, may get to shake each other's hands and, and have some time of fellowship with all this fine group of men who is constantly persuading and asking each year to come to their fellowship. It makes me feel real good. 
My wife also wanted to thank you all for your welcome, and last night she didn't get in. But last night, we've got a little boy, Joseph. How many of you remember me speaking that Joseph would come years before he got here? Oh, yeah. Six years, the Lord showed me his coming. And um, he's all boy. <laughs> She's a little woman. <laughs> Someone I was speaking here some time ago and had a Spanish meeting, and I said, this is an international gathering. I said, I'm Irish, my wife is German, my baby's Indian, and I'm speaking to Spanish. Afterwards, a little Spanish girl said, Brother Branham, don't you think that your baby's a bit pale to be an Indian? I said, only an Indian by accident. <laughs> really all boy. It's a little late, and so we'll not take too much time. May the Lord bless us now as we bow our heads to speak to him. Most gracious Father, we just can't find any words to express our feeling in our heart. As it is said by one some time ago in the meeting that he could speak in seven different languages and could speak it fluently. But when he got close to you one night, he couldn't find any words to express how he felt, so you gave him a new language to express his feelings to you. That's the way we feel, Lord. There's no words that we could form in our thinking to tell how we love you and to thank you for what you have been to us. And we could not get reverent enough Neither could we even think enough deep thoughts to come to you to ask you to continue to be with us. Oh, we need you, Lord. As the songwriter has said, I need thee, oh, I need thee, every hour I need thee. That's the way we feel, Lord. So draw nigh unto us now as we sit after a great day of, of speaking and manifestations of your blessings, and we've come tonight to listen again for the word. We would pray that you would take the words of your servant and speak them to the hearts of your peoples. And when we leave tonight, may our hearts be just so filled with your love till we'll go from here with a determination to serve you more than ever in life. And if there would be a sojourner that has come into our midst tonight that doesn't know you in the baptism of your spirit, or neither has no Jew by confession of faith, May this be the hour that they'll say that one eternal yes to God and surrender their all. And if that has been done and they have not yet received the Holy Ghost since they have believed, may this be the night that they will receive the gift of God in their life. Amen. Yes. If there be sick among us, Lord, may they go out of here tonight rejoicing and thanking God for newfound faith. And help. We're depending on thee, Lord, for thou hast promised that you'd fill us with good things. Blessed are they that do hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. Now speak to our hearts as we have need. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> I've chosen for tonight a subject as I thought on my way. I would like to read some of the scripture or a verse of scripture found the 119th Psalm and the 59th verse. I thought on my ways and turned my feet unto thy testimonies. David was in trouble at the writing of this psalm. We're told that it was during the time that Saul was threatening to kill him. 
and his house was being watched. Saul's men were laying watching to see David come out. Then they would kill him. And I can just imagine tonight seeing David walking back and forth, up and down on the floor, wringing his hands. It's usually when a man gets in trouble that then he'll turn to God. It's too bad that it has to take those things to bring a man to recognize that he's a sinner or away from God's presence and blessings. But God does it that way. And I can see him as he's thinking, and all of a sudden, God's goodness bursts forth, and he begins to sing out. As I thought on my ways, I turned my feet to thy testimonies. A few months ago in our little city of Jeffersonville, Indiana, I was called by a mother to go down and speak to the judge of the, the court, which is a personal friend of mine. And to intercede for her son, for he was going to penitentiary for stealing a car. And I called up the judge and I said, could I speak to you in the morning privately just a little before the trial? And he said, sure. And I went to his office and knocked at the door and they opened the door. He asked the man to step out, and he gave me a nice big handshake and said, What's on your mind this morning, Brother Brand? And I said, Judge, I'd, I'd like to ask you something, knowing that you're going to stand someday before a just judge yourself. And I know that you have to be honest in your decisions, the best of your knowledge. But the boy that you're going to try, in a few minutes, the mother called me last night and said that her son sobbed on her shoulder and said, Mother, if God will only let me out, I'll serve him all the days of my life. The judge looked at me and he said, Billy, you know what? I've never sent a man to penitentiary yet, but what wanted to be a preacher before he left. <laughs> you see, it's when we are in trouble, then we begin to think about God. It's too bad that we have to have it that way, but it is that way. When Israel got in trouble, when they had forsaken God and went off after idols and doing things that they should not do, then they turned to God and cried out. They sacrificed sheep and, and animals and, and cried out day and night for mercy. And then the strange thing that was with Israel, so is it with the church today, God will come to their rescue, and then after it's all over, they forget all about it. Right. Right. If God was so merciful to forgive a man of his sins, and to give him eternal life, he ought to be so reverent before God all the days of his life, Amen. that he would never turn his feet from God's testimony. He should always walk upright before God. But it's just that way. They do it that way. It behooves us all, while we are not in trouble, to seek God. It isn't good to wait till we get in trouble and then seek God. It's best to find Him now. For it is written that He is a very present help in the time of trouble. I can remember a story, and my wife back there remembers it more than I do, I suppose. 
On our honeymoon, I had to make a little double time. While we were on our honeymoon, we didn't have a, just a little money, so I, I took her up into New York to see Niagara Falls, and while I was up there, I went hunting. <laughs> and I left her in a little lean-to one morning, and I thought I was too good an Indian to ever lose myself in the woods. And I wandered away, telling her I'd be back at a certain time, and her city girl had never been in the mountains in her life. And I said, you bake some potatoes over the fire, and we'll have baked roasted potatoes and salt and pepper and put it on a little stick of butter. I said, we'll just have a real jubilee. I'll be back at two o'clock. And I put my hand on top of Billy's head, which was just a little taught at that time of about five years old, and took off down through the woods, wandering along through the great giant forest. I was following a bear trail. After a while, I noticed something across the ridge, and I took across another ridge, and then another ridge, and I got down into the bottom, which is called the Giants. It's in the Adirondack. And I shot a deer, a great, huge deer, and I said, that's better than the bear. Now I'll go back home. And as I noticed, the storm clouds was hanging low. And I said, now I'll come right down this way. Now, anyone knows that's ever been in the woods, it's time to sit down when the storm clouds come. Because it's foggy, you don't know where you're going. But as I got farther up or thinking I was going right, I found myself walking too far trying to find a place to come out. I come back to where I shot the deer. I did that three times in succession. Now, the Indians call that the death walk. You're walking in a circle. You think you're going one way, but coming back to the same place. The storm was already on. The snow was falling. And I thought, what can I do now? I got a wife and baby in this woods that's never in the woods in their life, and they'll, they'll die tonight. Ordinarily, I'd have found a cave and went into it and waited till the storm was over a day or two and come out and found my position and went on. But they didn't know how to take care of themselves. And I said, now, wait a minute. You're just getting beside yourself. And when you do that, you get a fever and then you're lost. Then you'll never find your way out. Plunge yourself to death, mostly. Well, I knew I was walking in a circle, but what circle was it? The wind was coming in my face when I went to shoot the deer, and then on the road back, the wind was in my face again. So I couldn't tell general directions because it was just twisting in the treetops. And I said, well, I'm going one straight way again. And I said, I'll not turn. I'll go straight, and I know that I'm right. I'm too good a woodsman to ever be lost in the woods. And I started on, kind of spurting myself on. That's intellectually. I can't get lost because I'm too good a hunter. And I started on, and I began to realize that I was lost. That's the way we get sometimes when we think we join a church and we're all right, but there's something tells us we're lost. Right. Wait till death strikes you and then see what you think. Better be sure now. And as I started on sincerely in my heart, I could hear a voice speaking to me saying, Lord, is the very present help in the time of trouble? And I thought, now I'm getting beside myself. Then I realized that I was completely lost and I knelt down and on my cap and set my rifle to the side of the tree and said, Lord God, I'm lost and I need you. And when I raised up, I said, now I'll go straight again. And as I made two or three steps, a hand laid on my shoulder. And I turned to see what it was just in time to see the clouds clear back and see the tower on top of Hurricane Mountain. I was going straight into Canada. 
And the Lord turned me back to the tower. I stood in my directions exactly toward that tower. I wept and I shouted the praises of God. For I know he turned my feet towards the right path again. That was a great minute for me. But not half the minute it was one day when he turned my face towards Calvary. When I was lost. I can never forget that moment. Let's come while we are in our right mind. Some time ago a young colored boy rushed into the meeting. When the altar call was being made, he come from the outside. And he come up and he said, I want to become a Christian tonight. Well, certainly, we're always glad to see that. And said, the reason I want to become a Christian, I've been a rambler. And said, I was out rambling around once then up in the north woods and said, I got without money. And said, I hired myself to a lumber camp. Or there was an aged colored woman that had done the cooking, and I was going to assist her and, and then to wash dishes and so forth far, to get enough money to go on. Said we slept in a little back room with a large piece of canvas to separate her part from my part. And said one night with my head under the cover, I was awakened by voices that was speaking loud by my window. And I pulled my head out from under the cover and he said, I heard one man say, Jim, let's hurry back to the cabin as quick as we can because we may be swept completely into eternity in the next few moments for that tornado is headed right this way. So then I could not but wonder when I jumped to the window and looked and seen that long funnel shaped cloud and just one constant blast of thunder and lightning and see when the lightning the trees rooting up and that great long serpent tail was coming right towards our cabin. Said I heard the canvas rake and the aged old woman said, Son, Come over on my side, I've got a lantern lit here. And said, I went over and she said, are you a Christian? Said, I said, no, I'm not a Christian. Said, did you ever pray? Said, no, I've never prayed. Said, well, you better be praying. For these twisters lay everything flat on the ground. Said the Reverend, I got down with the side of that old woman on that little box where the lantern sat. But I was too scared to pray. He said, I couldn't get my thinking right. And he said that every time I'd start to pray, a tree would root up and slam against the cabin, the windows would go out. He said, I was too scared to pray. He said, and now all the thing I could do was sit and watch that calm old saint with not a bit more weary and nothing in the world constantly speaking to somebody that she was acquainted with. And I said, Lord, I'm too scared to pray, but if, if you just let me live, I will pray after this. You see, it takes trouble sometimes to make us realize to turn our feet to God, turn ourselves over to Him. I believe it was Job who thought on his ways, and he wanted to make them sure, not only on his ways, but his children's ways. And he come God's only way that God ever did make for man, the burnt offering and under the blood. Many of you are sure that you have read the story of Job, 
And he said, my children's been out having parties. And peradventure they have sinned, I'll make an offering for them. Yeah. He wanted to be sure while he was normally and right. You know, I think if mothers and fathers tonight in this fair land of ours, if they spent more time on their knees praying, bringing their children to God through prayer, instead of out in these parties drinking and running around, we'd have less juvenile delinquency. And Job come by the way of the blood. The shedding of blood, that's the only grounds that God ever fellowship with man is on the basis of the shed blood. There's no other way that God will fellowship with people only through the shed blood. In the Old Testament, Israel had to come to one place of worship. That was under the shed blood. And then when trouble struck Job... He can scream out, I know my Redeemer liveth, and at the last days he'll stand on the earth. Though after the skin worms has destroyed this body, yet in my flesh shall I see God. And he can scream, though he slay me, yet I'll trust him. Why? He know what path to turn to when he got in trouble. Some of us go other paths. In this neurotic age that we're living, so many people turn to the psychiatrist, to Christians go to the psychiatrist, and the psychiatrist has to go to a psychiatrist. Turn our path to God, he's our healer. If our hearts condemn us not, then we have this assured God answers prayer. Job could say with a true heart, I know my Redeemer liveth. And he thought on his ways and turned to him. David, after he did wrong, and taken Uriah, the Hatite's wife, the lovely Bathsheba, and was going to be the father of her child, and it caused her gallant husband to be killed in battle. But when the prophet Nathan came in and revealed his sins to him, then David thought on his ways, and he turned himself to repentance and sackcloth and ashes. Yes. Mm-hmm. That's the way to turn. Yes. God heard him. God will always hear a man or woman that will turn their feet to his testimony. David was worthy of dying, and he pronounced his own death. But Nathan said, surely you are not God. For he knew David knew God and knew that he had done wrong. He had defiled his brother's wife. I wonder tonight and wouldn't say this but maybe there'd be another David sitting here tonight that's as guilty as David was. When you turn your light out at night, you see old brother's face, the man that you defiled his loving wife or broke up his home, flickering on the side of your wall or some woman, see the woman's home that she's broke up by running off with her husband. It ought to bring you to repentance and sackcloth and confession. Amen. What the church needs tonight is a confession and making right and come back to the testimonies of the Lord God. There's mercy and forgiveness. Right, right, right. Seems that it would haunt people. Going on, know that you're walking hour by hour in the face of death. Why do we continue on with selfishness and greed and ungodliness and, and our eyes on things of the world? It's time we turn back to God's testimonies. Amen. As I thought on my way, I turned my feet to thy testimonies. It was the prophet Jacob 
who had done wrong and had lied to his blind daddy because of a birthright. One day his heart began to yearn to go back to the homeland. And he must have thought all that time it was covered up. But when he began to get near home, he heard that Esau was coming out to meet him. Then he thought of his deceiving way. Right. And he prayed all night on the other side of the river when he thought how he had deceived his brother. Yeah. They called him to all night's prayer. God knows that's what the church needs. I remember when the church used to call for all night's prayer meetings. And when the sermon went forth, there was a dry eye in the church. Everybody wept and cried out before God. And today it seems like it's so loose that people just go on living any way they want to and still say they are Christians. I wonder if we're not nearing home. We better think on our ways and turn our feet to his testimonies. It was Moses, the mighty prophet, an old sheep herder he had turned him to be that was wandering back behind the mountain one day on a little old path that the sheep had made. Perhaps it was very familiar to him. But that morning was just a little different from other mornings. There seemed to be something around him. You know, Jesus said once, if they hold their peace, the rocks will cry out. That's right, right. I wonder if the angels wasn't preaching to him. All of a sudden, he began to think on his ways. How that he had made a failure in life. And had tried to find safety while his people were in bondage. God grant that the heart of every preacher in here will get that burden. How can we rest in Zion when the world is covered with sin and Church members living in sin. How can we hold our peace when the church is torn to pieces by creeds and denominations and brotherhood is separated and the people are becoming worldly when God requires holiness for no man shall see the Lord. Moses began to think on his ways. How that he had went off in his own schooling and training. And he knew there was a call of God on his life. Yes. But he had tried to work it out his own way. Many of us preachers get in that trouble. A call of God on our life and then go off and get a schooling. That tells us that the days of miracles are past. And there's no such a thing as the baptism of the Holy Spirit. That was for days gone by. God let you think on your ways. That same God won't that word still lives and holds you responsible to it. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Yes. It's wrong. God's infinite and when he speaks it's got to be perfect. He cannot change. We cannot alter God's word. We have to alter our thinking. To his thinking. Let the mind of Christ be in you. Amen. That's right. Amen. Then you'll think like he thinks. Yes. Amen. And as he began to think on those things, I can see him become all tore up. There's no man who can come into the presence of his own past but what gets tore up about it. Right. Amen. Yes. I pray that the Holy Spirit will bring every human being in here now back to your past and look at it. Then turn to his testimony. And as he began to think, I can see that old man with flowing white beard. But he said, I've lived my life. I'm 80 years old. And if I'd have thought of it when I was a young man, he would have done the right thing. But now it's too far. 
and the great crystal tears rolling down his white whiskers. And about that time when he was thinking on his way, there was a cracking noise on the side of the hill. Yeah, yeah. And while he was thinking on his way, he said, I'll turn aside yeah. to see what this thing God has done. I trust that God will bring that burning bush in the hearing distance of every person here tonight. We can think on our way. And it changed Moses when he turned his feet from the path of sheep and wild animals to the path that God had led him to the Red Sea and to the Promised Land. Thinking on his ways. It does us good to think on his ways. After the cock had crowed three times, and Peter looked up at the face of the Lord Jesus, he began to think on his ways. And what he had done to our Lord. And the prophecy and the word of the Lord came into his view. For he know God had said, that same God that told him that has told us what to do. What did he do when he thought on the ways that he had treated Jesus and how he had denied him before the classical people and how he had tried to be one of the world and tried to act like the rest of them. When he thought on his ways that drove him into the darkness to weep bitterly. Amen. I believe it's cock crowing time now for the church of the living God to get alone with God and weep in bitterness and tears and say, God be merciful to me. No doubt but what there's men and women here tonight. Boys and girls that need that same thing. All of us need it. Alone with God. Think of our ways as we go. Turn our feet to his testimonies. Yes, it was Judas that was standing by the high priest to receive his money for betraying the Lord Jesus. I'd certainly hate to take his place. But there's man in Chicago tonight is more guiltier than Judas is carried. He was taking a bribe. Many men are taking a salary in a Cadillac car and big homes selling out to the principles of God. They're ashamed of the baptism of the Holy Spirit. They're ashamed of the moving of God's Holy Ghost. They're too classical. That makes them join the church. They do that because they're afraid of a new birth. I say this in a mixed multitude, but I want you to understand as your brother. When a baby's born, if it's on the floor, if it's on a straw tick, or if it's only in a decorated hospital room, it's a mess any way you take it. But it brings life. That's what the new birth is. It's a mess, but it brings life. It brings eternal life. Amen. Brings life. Life, I don't care what level it's on, I want to have that life. That's right, God. For we live forever. Amen. Man, join churches that dodge that. They sell their birthrights as Judas did. And he heard the trinkling of that silver as it trinkled into his hands and he cried out, betrayed innocent blood. I don't want nothing standing between me and the Lord like that at the end of the road. I trust it won't you. I have betrayed innocent blood. And he took the short route. He took the rope and went hung, he said. When you think on your past, it'll either drive you to God or drive you away from God. You might take the route of seeing backsliding, smoking, try to puff it away. You might go down to the saloon and get a whiskey and try to drink it away. When you've defiled yourself and defiled others and lied and stole and cheated or denied the gospel that you're trying to represent. 
So have finery and look like the rest of them and act like the people of today. God wants you to be different. That's right, and I. He requires different. You'd be just as guilty as dirty pieces of silver. You can take the short route, sure. But there never was one looked back in the Bible times. Those who came to him when they thought on their ways like Peter, he found mercy. Those who took the short route is in eternity out in yonder somewhere without God, without hope, without Christ. Take the road to him. It's open. It's right. The Roman soldier, after he had pierced his side with his spear, and seen the water and blood gushing forth, and seen the sun go down in the middle of the day, the rocks in the mountains red out, and hear the thunder and see the lightning without a cloud, he smote himself upon the chest and said, That surely was the Son of God. Yes, yes. God, God. He thought on his ways. He seen what he had done. And down at the foot of the cross he went, so we're told. God. He thought on his ways. And he turned to God's testimony. Pilate, after trying to wash his hands of Jesus, ten years passed and he was still trying to get the blood of Christ off of his hands. Maybe ten years from tonight you'll be trying to shake this message off your hand. But he washed and he washed and he washed and there was no way to get it off. But too much pride to turn to the man that he killed. Right, right, right. He finally plunged himself to death over in Switzerland in a pool of water which the legend is that on every good Friday the blue water bails up. I wonder tonight if you're thinking on your way. I wonder if you've been thinking back down in your mind something that you've done and the path that you have trod. If you are and you're condemned, don't take the short way to go join a church or go do this or drink yourself to death or something. Well, let me tell you something. There is a fountain filled with blood. Drawn from Emmanuel veins and sinners plunged beneath the flood lose all of their guilty sins. That dying feet fall on his way and rejoice to see that fountain in his day. There may I go by he wash all my sins away. Ever since by faith I saw that stream by flowing means supply, redeeming love has been my theme and shall be till I die. Yeah. Then in a nobler, sweeter song I'll sing thy power to save when this poor listening, stammering tongue lies silent in the grave. Yeah. Run to him, there's room at the fountain for you. Let's bow our heads. Think on your way. Lord, what can we do? We either think on our ways now and make it right, or maybe before morning it'll be too late. Our hearts will be fluttering, death will be meeting us, and we'll be like the young colored man, we couldn't pray. But while we're normal, while we're sitting here with the introductory song playing, there is a fountain filled with blood, may we think on our ways and turn to thy testimony. Guide our feet to that path of life, that bloody path that Jesus trod all the way from Pilate's judgment hall to Calvary. 
May we deny ourselves, pick up his cross, and follow after him. And as we're thinking, may the Holy Spirit speak to our hearts. Hallelujah. And may we turn from our selfish ways to the ways of the Lord. And now with heads bowed and everyone praying, if you're thinking on your ways and you don't feel too good about it, let's come right now. Let's just stand right up to our feet. Say, Lord, I'm thinking on my way. God bless you, young fellow. I'm thinking on my ways and I'm turning right now. Oh, I've received the Holy Spirit long ago, but there's been so many things that I've done. I'm thinking of my ways. I know I've done wrong. And I'm turning my feet to thy testimonies right now as I stand. I desire the prayer of this church to pray for me now. I'm turning to thy testimonies, thy word, O Lord, and thy testimonies is this. He that will come to me, I will in no wise cast out. Hallelujah. Amen. It is also in the testimonies. If you hide your sin, you shall not prosper. But if you confess your sin, you'll have mercy. You who wants forgiveness of all that you've done, and you make your promise of a dedicated life from tonight on to God, stand to your feet with these two young fellows that's standing up now. Hallelujah. God bless you. Hallelujah. God bless you all around everywhere. That's good. Hallelujah. I am standing myself. Yeah. I want God to search me and try me. Amen. If there be any unclean thing in me, reveal it to me. I'll confess it and make it right. I'll go do anything that he wants me to do. Amen. For if I was dying, that would be my cry. If you were dying, that would be your cry. So why not turn now before the storm comes? In the hours of your trouble, you could say with Job, I know my Redeemer liveth. Won't you stand, will there be some more before we pray? Remember me, O Lord. God bless you, ladies. God bless you all. Just remain standing for prayer. Yes, up in the balcony there. That's good. Faith cometh by hearing as I fall on my ways. I turn my feet to thy testimonies, O Lord. Danger may be leaning at the door. It is. If there's one speck of condemnation... Stand to your feet now for prayer. While many are standing, more getting up, God bless you, that sincerity as I thought on my ways. As I thought of what I've been, Lord, I turn to you. I don't believe there's a one of us lives daily, but what we have to turn every hour to him. I need thee, oh, I need thee. Every hour I need thee. Oh, bless me now, my Savior. I come to thee. I come, Lord. I'm standing. That's all I can do. I'm standing because I'm convinced that I'm wrong and I'm asking for your mercy. The reason I keep holding because people keep standing. How do I know that just one minute longer might mean the difference of death and life in an hour or two from now? Some boy with a trombone, heart attacked, knowing that he's going out to meet God. And on his bed, screaming. I thought, what if I just have stood up there tonight at the church? I'm so bothered now, I don't know what to do. Stand now, friend of mine. Come to this fountain. God will give you mercy. Now, with our heads bowed, let us pray. Each one in your own way, you that's standing. Lord, reverently and quietly and silently we come humbly to Thee, knowing that we are no good thing in us, there's no soundness in us at all. We are altogether polluted.
for we are born in sin, shaped in iniquity, come to this world speaking lies, and by nature we are sinners. And we need thy grace, Lord, and thy mercy and thy holiness. For we have none within ourselves, and neither can our churches or our creeds ever hide us its only fig leaves, which was rejected at the beginning, and so will it be rejected at the end. But we are turning our feet to thy testimony. To thy word. And we are confessing our faults and our sins and asking for thy forgiveness. Whatever our defilement is, Lord, may the fountain that of the teeth rejoice to see. May it wash all our sins away. Grant it, Lord. May we leave this building tonight like newborn babes, fresh and clean. And if you should call us from this earth tonight, we feel we'd be ready to go. Because our feet are turned towards thy testimonies. We were as lost as I was in the woods, Lord. And how my heart rejoiced to see that tower that day. And our hearts are rejoicing tonight to see the Tower of Calvary. Where we know that there is safety and, and there's where the lost come in and are found and directed home. Bless these dear ones, these men, these women, boys and girls that standing, confessing their wrongs. It is written in the word, he that will come to me, I will in no wise cast out. And they've been thinking of them, and as David was, they may be as guilty of other things as David was of taking your eyes wife, but you heard it. You heard the prayer of David, and you, although you made him reap for what he sowed, but he was still your servant. You forgave him because he turned to you. They never turned away from the church tonight like Judas, but they have come to the cross. They're not going to try to drink this away. They're, they're going to pray it away. They're going to do like Jacob. They're going to cry until the angel of God blesses them and takes away all the sin and the shame. And I believe you'll do it right now, Lord, for you promised it. We believe it. In the name of the Lord Jesus, and while we have our heads bowed, I'm going to ask you that standing to your feet that stood, that feels that you've turned your feet towards God tonight, raise up your hands to him and by signaling to him, Lord, I've turned my feet. God bless you 100%. Turn your feet towards God's testimonies. He'll do it. He'll take every sin away. Give you peace satisfaction, things that the world cannot do. Now the audience may raise their heads and look at the fellows and women who are standing by you. I want you, when they sit down, to shake their hands. God bless you and welcome them into the fellowship of Jesus Christ. Those who were standing as they sat down, let the Christians around say, God bless you, brother and sister. If there was anything wrong and feel, now that it's all gone, God be merciful to you. Amen. Is there any sick among you? Raise your hand. Now lay your hands on one another that's got the sickness. As I said last night, I've been out praying. I, I want this one thing in my life. That when I, when I pray, I, I want to believe that I'm going to have what I ask for. A fine little brother that belongs to the Assemblies of God, Louisville, Kentucky, Brother Rogers. You Assembly of God people, you see him on your your book of of your minutes or ever what you call it. He's a fine little fella. He was in my study about three days ago, and we were praying. He said, "Brother Benham, do you think we'll have a revival in Louisville?" I said, I hope so. And he turned to look at me. I said, Brother Rogers, I met God the other day that came. I 
can't say that I think so because I don't think so. But there's one thing I can be honest about. I hope so. I do hope we do, but to say I think it, I cannot think it. I, I'm mutual. I, I like to see it, but I can't, don't know whether there will be or not. We want to search our lives and see if there be any unclean thing in us. And if our hearts condemn us not, then ask. You can receive what you ask for. I'm going to ask for your healing. I want you to ask for your healing and ask for the people's healing sitting by you. God will heal the people. Let us pray now. Lord, just the same as you were wounded for our transgressions, in your testimonies it's written, by stripes we are healed. There are those who are physically sick that they cannot serve you just right because they're sick and feel bad. They've wearied and come to the church and they're sitting in this convention listening to the ministers, your servants speaking. They're in misery and pain. God grant that this will settle it right now. That their hearts will turn to your testimony. I'm the Lord that heals all thy diseases. And all things are possible to them that believe. And with no condemnation in our hearts, we now believe in you that you will heal us and take all of our sickness away from us. We ask this in Jesus' name, and so shall it be. Amen. There are letters here, Lord, and little cards and parcels that represent sick and afflicted. And we're taught that they're taken from the body of St. Paul, handkerchiefs or aprons. And we know we're not St. Paul, but you're still God. Let it be so, Lord, that when these handkerchiefs touch the sick, may the enemy turn them loose. And may they be healed. For we're following the testimonies of God, the testimonies of his Bible. And we believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God, who cleansed us from all unrighteousness. And gives us the Holy Ghost and divine healing right now. Hallelujah. In Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Amen.